Hi guys, uh, today I have uh, with me a special uh, guest, uh, Turkish self-made uh, billionaire, Mr. Üznü Üzeyin. Mr. Üzeyin has created 75 companies in 12 countries. He is also the founder of Üzeyin University in Istanbul and one of the most active philanthropists in Turkey and I would say even in Europe. Please welcome with me, Mr. Isnir Ezin. Thank you. I'm delighted to be with you. Mr. Ezin, I have studied your life and uh, we um, made an interview several years ago for uh, this book, The Billion Dollar Secret. Yes. And uh, I am so inspired by your personality. What I learned from you is uh, that you take as an example the greatest people in uh, history to inspire you and uh, to get the methods to operate in business on as high level as possible. And uh, you also uh, founded the Uzin University. Can you tell me why did you find uh, Uzin University and why do you consider education important and what do you do in that field? Yes, actually, <clears throat> first of all, I would like to congratulate you, Rafael, for uh, writing this book. I think it's a very inspiring book for young men and women who are uh, trying to be successful in their entrepreneurial life. I think that the uh, real life stories of uh, successful people around the world will inspire young men and women. And the, what the entrepreneurs need the most are mentors and success stories so that uh, they can guide themselves through life with the experiences of uh, others who have been successful. I'm sorry that I cannot attend your launch event, but uh, I'm sending him as my representative, Miss Ayla Göksel, who is in charge of all of our philanthropic activities. And uh, she's also uh, a personal assistant to me. So the reason why I founded Ozzy University is because I feel that uh, an emerging country like Turkey, uh, what it needs most is well-educated and trained young men and women. And Ozzy University has been founded on the principle of not only granting an academic, a good academic uh, training to their students, but also real life experiences during their uh, university years. So we make sure that our students are working when they are attending the university, summer jobs, as well as uh, working on the campus. We have 400 students that are working part-time on the campus. In fact, I have a call center uh, in, uh, in, in our dormitories so that uh, students are paid to call credit card customers who are late in making their credit card payments, for instance. So we try to create jobs on campus uh, besides the uh, traditional jobs on campus. I think it comes from your experience in the States when you were on your own uh, in the States and had to provide for your life, right? Yourself. That's right. Well, I, w I went to the, after graduating from Robert College in Istanbul, which is a, uh, which is a high school that's now 150 years old, uh, it's, one, it's one of the first American schools, missionary schools that were founded by American uh, wealthy merchants in Istanbul in 1863. So when I graduated from there, my dream was to go to the United States. And I started my uh, trip with a thousand dollars that my father gave me, who was, a, who was a, my late father was a medical doctor in the city of Izmir. And by the time I arrived at Oregon State University, uh, where I had a half a scholarship in my freshman year, I had $100. So I basically started life with $100. Uh, and uh, I worked all through my college career. I did every job you can imagine. And I was able to, uh, I was a civil engineering student, so I could find summer jobs in the field of engineering. And then, after graduating from Oregon State, where, by the way, I was uh, president of the student body 
or 14,000 students. And that's how I got into Harvard Business School because my grades were not very good. I graduated barely with 2.17 average uh, over four, but Harvard Business School accepted me with no job experience because of, I suppose, my, my leadership qualities. And I had my first entrepreneurial job at Harvard Business School where in my second year, I ran what was called Gallows Grill, which was a grill that operated in the evenings for students that worked late. I made hamburgers and pizzas for them and also on weekends because the main cafeteria was closed on weekends because MBA students uh, went elsewhere uh, in Boston over the weekend. And I made $8,200 in my second year at Harvard Business School. That translates into something like $260,000 with today's dollars because tuition was $2,000, now it's $60,000. So you have to multiply the $8,200 by 30 times. And that was an immense amount of money. And I paid all my debts to the school from my first two years. And I even invested a few dollars uh, in the New York Stock Exchange at that time. Wow, it's um, amazing. And this shows uh, also the importance of work. I mean, of hustle, right? You need to put in the time and not think that you can uh, become successful in your coffee break, right? That's right. The student that operated the grill before me at 13 employees, I did it with only three employees. So that means I had to work quite a lot harder than the previous second year students that yeah. ran that grill. And that's how you, uh, you come into profit, right? That's right. Why, why did you want to actually contribute to the billion dollar book project? Well, the reason why I wanted to do that is because I always uh, think it's important to share my life time experiences uh, with others. I do this quite often in Turkey. I, I visit different universities and different high schools uh, where I address to the students and relate my experiences because I think it's extremely important. And that's exactly the reason why I also wrote a book myself as a biography. I completed it last year. And I, I admire also Rafael for writing this book because I never had an experience of writing book. It took me eight years to write this book with the assistance of an editor. And uh, it took me five years to write mine. So I, I understand what you are talking about, right? But I had to, you know, to travel uh, around the globe several times actually uh, to gather the, uh, the material for that. And you had your material in your head already. So it's. Uh, yes, but I, but I, uh, I was honored, of course, to be a part of this book, and I hope that your book will be, will be a bestseller in Amazon. It actually became a um, uh, number one Amazon bestseller last week in, uh, in several countries already. We will see, I hope it will be quite uh, successful. Uh, but from your, uh, I would like to, to know from your standpoint, because you are so far away in the business success, um, what makes this book valuable? Uh, and maybe different in your eyes, uh, because they are thousands of books on, on success, right? Or... Well, this is the first time that <clears throat> several successful entrepreneurs in different fields of life uh, have been accumulated in the same book. Right. So in other words, you can compare the lifestyles of, of different entrepreneurs and how they reached success in a way with different, different methods, but obviously with the same desire and drive, which, which is really basically to be passionate about your work. In other words, if you're not passionate about your work, you cannot be successful. You have to be in love with your work and your work has to be your first hobby. I mean, you can have other hobbies as well, but they, all those hobbies have to be secondary or tertiary to your love for work. I am 74 years old right now. I still come to the office on Saturdays, not during the summers, but uh, all three other seasons. And, and I enjoy sitting at my desk, responding to my letters and my emails. And uh, I even call people that call me 
they're sometimes surprised that I get them on the seller phone. Uh, they first say, oh, you're not Mr. Ezzeen, you're kidding us over the phone. I say, no, I am Mr. Ezzeen. I'm not kidding you. I mean, I enjoy the contact with the people. And obviously, the greatest part of what I'm doing is that I enjoy touching other people. And this is why I, I place a lot of importance on philanthropic activities, which I started early in my career, right after I established Finance Bank, which was my greatest asset before I sold it. I established a foundation in Turkey under my name, and I started giving scholarships to needy students. Then we decided to build girls' dormitories in the poorest areas of Turkey, where the GMP per capita is less than $1,000 per year, because girls living in villages do not have the opportunity to continue their education after primary school. So they have to go to large towns or cities to attend junior and senior high schools. So we built girls' dormitories in large towns and cities so that the girls can depart from their village and go and stay in these dormitories and continue their education. And we built 25 girls' dormitories like this in Turkey. And it's interesting that 52% of those girls, after they graduate from high school, they attend universities. So instead of staying in their villages and getting married when they're 16 or 17 years old and having three or four children by the time they reach uh, age of a, you know, going to a university, they really earn their own living uh, having graduated from university. So in other words, they, we changed their lives basically. And then we built also other schools in, in, in places where uh, we built... Uh, primary schools, we built uh, other schools, which are completely non-profit. We turned these over to, to the Ministry of Education so they can operate them because there were classes in certain Turkish cities with 100 students in one class. So we built some schools so that they can have classes with 30, 40 students, which is obviously more manageable than 100 students in a class. But when I did these things, I only built brick and mortar. So in other words, I could not contribute to the quality of education in these educational institutions. So that's when I decided after selling Finance Bank that I had the financial means to build the university because uh, I've invested half a billion dollars in this university completely on my own with no other donations from anybody else. So, uh, that's so, why this is just uh, amazing. you are like in the one line with uh, pe people like Rockefeller and uh, uh, Carnegie who uh, you know found their uh, educational institutions in a, in a big way right I mean uh, well, about you know the most successful people in the in the world they, there is hardly anybody who, who founds universities right I think founding a university is much more valuable than donating money to to, to people you know because Education is the most important element in the development of people and the country. So, and our university is also a research university. So we do research with grants from the government and from the European Union. So we contribute to the advancement of uh, technology in Turkey, which is extremely important, obviously. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, the, there is so many uh, takeaways uh, from uh, your story. What would be the three main takeaways from uh, your life, from your story that uh, you would like people to, to learn in that book? What would you say? Well, I would say that uh, what's common of, with the entrepreneurs in this book is that they all work hard, but at the same time they have fun in doing it. And obviously, it's not a matter of, the important thing is not to accumulate wealth because you cannot take so much money with you when you go to the, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, when you pass away. So uh, I think that the Americans are great examples of donating their wealth before, before they pass away. So you have to multiply the value you create with other people. This is the key, I think, and very important. So 
the success also is to basically share that value with others. And it's not only me that's doing this, but also my wife as a mother and children education foundation, uh, which foundation has trained 1 million mothers and preschool children in Turkey. I mean, these mothers are underprivileged. They don't have any education, so they don't know how to take care of their preschool children because until recently, there were not many kindergartens in Turkey. So my wife's foundation with 4,600 volunteers did this in all 81 provinces in Turkey. And this foundation now has become an international success. They received the WISE Award in Qatar in education, and they're operating in, they're, op they're even providing services in countries like Laos, preschool children education in Bahrain, in Saudi Arabia, in, in, in uh, Jordan. So it has become an international foundation and they're doing incredible work. So I mean, our family has touched over a million people so far. This is amazing. This is fascinating. Awesome. This is what's really self-satisfying because uh, what uh, money doesn't mean anything unless you use it properly and you share it with others. Wonderful. I think this is, uh, these are just great words to end this interview. Rafael, I want to congratulate again. And I'm sorry I cannot attend your launch event, but I'm saying hello to all the billionaires in the book when they come to London. Thank you, Mr. Uzin. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for uh, being here. And thank you for providing your wisdom uh, to this book. To get this unique book, The Billion Dollar Secret, go to my website, thebilliondollarsecret.com, here in the video and in um, the description below the video, you will find uh, the link. I invite you to comment this video and uh, give me also a thumb up. This will help to rank this uh, video. And of course, share this video with your loved ones, with your friends one day. They will thank you for that. That's it for today. I wish you a fantastic day. Let's do something extraordinary today.